Good morning and welcome to being your own CEO. This is us, our success team, our success circle. We've been meeting here, um, I think it's about a year and a half now. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day and thinking, wow, we've been at this for a while. And some people have come and gone and some people have been here all along. So <laughs> that's the nature of a success circle. So um, rather than uh, waste any time on uh, saying what we're about, we are here to support each other and, and uh, share information. That's enough. So let's get started and have everyone do um, their uh, introduction. Um, say who you are, where you are, and what you do, and any little announcement that you might have. So, this time I'm going to begin on my right hand side, and so Roland, that means you need to turn your mic back on. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Roland. I call myself a modern internet marketer because not too many people are calling themselves that. And um, I like to involve myself with uh, hangouts and do things online, share, teach, and learn. And that's basically what I do. Welcome here, Roland. So nice to have you. Thank you. And next is uh, Nathan. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nathan. I'm currently from Ensenada in Mexico. My main gig has been freelance writing for a number of years. I'm transitioning out of that and just dealing with a very challenging situation right now. And that's about all I want to say about it. But anyway, um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for having me. Right. And, and Nathan's been here for a long time, haven't you, Nathan? Pretty much since the beginning. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what it is about you, uh, Lowell. I, mean, I, 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 I think don't know you, I think I think you must be wandering around with some sort of string and a fish hook, or or some some clue that keeps me, you know, in your life. We're all trying to figure that out at the same time. I, I'm sure you are, but you know, this has been going on for a long time. I've known Lola Land that. for probably okay. like ten years. Come on, you guys, come on. <laughs> so, hey, next, you're the one who started it. <laughs> next is Jay. <laughs> I think it's Lowland's Jedi mind trick. You know, these aren't the droids you're looking for. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Jay, and my company is Affiliate Resources Incorporated, and I help people get started in the world of online business. No major announcements. Just uh, I think today's an awesome day, just because. Right on. And I like using the word awesome because I think it's an awesome word. I read an article uh, yesterday by. Uh, um, someone who's here in Victoria about using the word awesome and I found that pretty, it was a funny article in the Times Columnist. I was ready to go like, oh, did you read that today, Lalan? No, but I, I think I've stumbled on something similar recently. Uh, yeah, I, uh, P P Prince Huron Communications Girl. I, I don't remember her name, but at any rate. Mm -hmm. Great article, so I'll, I'll share it with you a little bit later. <laughs> right on. <laughs> it's awesome to have you here, Jay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I swear and, there's some cheese lying around somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So, Craig, you're next. I have a mute button here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the other word that you really like, Jay, is plethora. <laughs> mm. uh, my name's Craig, and I'm in uh, western New York. And... Uh, it's not 9 o'clock here, it's noon, so um, I enjoy my, my lunch break hanging out with you folks. Um, I work uh, with my local businesses, my uh, brick and mortars, and try and uh, help them get a better presence online and get people coming in the door. Right on. Among other things, Among I, know that, I know that you do many other things. I do many other things. <laughs> I'm I'm a jack of all trades, a master of none. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm I'm waiting to see where all your many hats are. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was actually thinking about putting a whole bunch of hats on, there. <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or or uh, headsets, because that's one of my things that I do. Hmm. Right on. So welcome here. It's so nice to have you. 
Okay, Carlo, you're next. Good morning, Carlo, Las Vegas, where I operate a comfortably small uh, digital marketing consultancy or agency, uh, working with clients in six-month cycles. Uh, <clears throat> coming from a background of management and financial consulting, I put an analytical twist into a client's digital marketing campaign. That's it. Right on. Nice to have you here, Carol. Thank you again. And Anne. All right. Yes, I'm unmuted. Um, so I am Anne DeVerdi. My company is Visionary Business Solutions. I am a bookkeeper. I'm an organizer. I help people count up their money and figure out uh, good ways to keep more of it. And uh, I'm excited to be involved with Wealthy Affiliate, though I have to say, honestly, I haven't spent very much time on it the last few days because I've been madly decorating for Christmas. And see, I am wearing my Christmas beads this morning. So mm. two weeks till the grandbaby is here again, and I have to be all ready. Mm. Aha, right on. So welcome. And um, I might say that I do work style lifestyle coaching with solopreneurs. I uh, help them find direction, uh, get focused, and get away from the feeling of overwhelm. Um, and um, yeah, I've just joined the, the wealthy affiliates as well. And I actually went in and, and uh, created a website and decided I didn't like it at all. Got rid of it and went in and, and created another one last night. So, <laughs> so um, play. Uh, that's that's uh, what I could regard as playing. I guess having some fun and playing. So, uh, and the other a couple of other things that I've been doing. Um, I'm, I'm running a community, a Google community for um, an organization that I belong to here called Peninsula Business Women. And um, been uh, sort of doing some work for our local host group to um, locate uh, good speakers. And um, um, then I do this every week. And I also have a three part course uh, called Beginners Google for Business. However, <laughs> it's under review at the moment. <laughs> So that leads us to um, the topic this morning called uh, Making Sense Out of Google. <laughs> Has anybody been messing around trying to find things and figure out what, where to go? <laughs> yeah. Well, and of course, um, um, what I've been noticing, because I've been messing around and experimenting this way and that way, that there are, there have been a few changes, little subtle changes that um, um, weren't there uh, when they first made the change. So um, yeah, um, and uh, I have to say that um, I want to give a, a shout out to Roland's um, Saturday Smarties because he has um, a couple of gals that are staying on top of things. Um, uh, Molly. Um, Molly Youngblood, help me out, Roland. <laughs> Geiger? Yeah, you got it. Oh, Molly right. Youngblood Geiger. Yeah. Of course, she says it so fast you can usually not understand what she's saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's one of those um, uh, Google partners, so uh, it's always uh, good uh, to hear what her take on things are. So, um, um, but uh, they're, they're, it seems as you look all over uh, Google Plus right now, everybody is talking about the same thing. <laughs> what on earth do we do with this? <laughs> so, <laughs> so anybody have any observations that they would like to uh, throw out um, right off the the bat? I, are you waving, Jay? Go I ahead. Have, do, I, do I have the conch? You have the conch. <laughs> Do have time. Cool. Yeah, I, I. It's funny because um, I've been. I've tried to be very active or relatively active inside Google Plus um, because I find that the things that you do inside Google Plus affect 
your rankings inside the search engines. Um, to me, that just totally makes sense because wh why would they not do that, right? Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that they've been kind of taking things away a little bit. Like, for example, about a year ago, they took away uh, something called authorship where you have the ability to put your little author image inside the search engine results. That's been gone and stuff like that. And, you know, and they've, they've changed a, a number of things. And, and I think, you know, with this particular monkey tree shakeup, um, you know, they've really, they've really <clears throat> segregated what it is Google Plus is about. And I think it, it's really uh, all it is now, it's a sharing tool. And I actually think, you know, even though it's hard to find things because we're so used to it, uh, I think that it's still a sharing tool, which it was in the first place, you know. Um, you know, I, I know that communicating with people is a little more difficult these days, you know, with it. Like, if you wanted to communicate one-on-one -on -one with people just through messaging, because um, I used to do that quite often. Uh, so it's great for prospecting for like if you want to try to get uh, an interview with someone and you don't have their contact details, you can actually send them a Google Plus message just to them and, and have it set so they don't reshare it and stuff. So all that has been, you know, a little more complex to, to find. But at the end of the day, it's still a sharing tool. And in my mind, it's still positively affecting Google rankings for, you know, the things that you do in there. So, you know, things like uh, collections and um, I... I personally have no value. I don't see any real value in it yet, or at least I haven't been shown. I haven't seen any value in it yet. You know, perhaps down the road someone will see, show me something, and go, "Oh, that's a great idea," and then I'll adopt that. You know, but at this point, my thought is that collections is just—it's going to probably go away. I—I'm I, that's that's my prediction for 2016. So, you—you've you've heard it here, folks. <laughs> Collections is going away in 2016. <laughs> really? Okay. Now, I, I've certainly heard some um, things um, that are the opposite of that. Yeah. But um, before I forget, um, I should mention because I'm noticing that a few people um, perhaps don't know this. This business about one-on-one uh, um, -on -one personal messaging, private messaging, and the way that you do that is. Um, put a plus and their name, plus name, mm -hmm. and that person is the only one that gets that message. Yeah. And, um, and um, the way that they get that message is through notifications. Yeah. And or, and depending on the way they, the way they have their system set up, whether, mm -hmm. for me, I've got all the emails turned off because there's way, 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 way too many, but, um, so um, um, I get all of my notifications through that little uh, that little uh, bell-shaped thing up in the right-hand corner. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I get those. So um, that's how you how the person uh, knows that you have sent them a message, and mm -hmm. you have to put the plus name in order for that to happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I see Anne uh, posted a little question in the um, in the um, uh, text box. What are collections? Okay, so let's talk about that. Collections started a few months back, and uh, it's a way to gather all your postings into one place under a specific topic. And the idea behind it was that people, if they have an interest in, uh, well, I'll give you an example. One of my collections is music, the music we love. And it's just, it's just something that I have a lot of interest in. And so I post, uh, when I stumble on something that I really enjoyed, I post it to there so that all er everything that I really enjoy about music ends up in that in that uh, one particular collection, and so that allows other people to pick and choose how and through what topic they may they want to stay connected to you. So, uh, <laughs> okay, so I have another question. Do, do you yeah. think they're trying to steal a little bit of Pinterest thunder? Like, are they trying to imitate what Pinterest has done with boards? 
that is um, uh, has been suggested. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it it, um, it and that's the way it works. And so um, people are 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 saying, well, you know, this is going to be the way that you because Google Google Plus has always been about um, the people you want to connect with based on your common interest. Mm -hmm. So with collections, it's it's uh, going to be a way for you to sort of re really zero in on the things that you're interested in. So do you think there's an advantage to having collections as opposed to Pinterest? Jay, what do you think? Will it affect your I, Google my, rankings better? My understanding is that collections will be indexed. I, 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 I would love to see that. I think that's great. I mean, collections, I think... It's like scrapbooking. It reminds me of scrapbooking, you know, mm -hmm. like, like yeah. getting pieces and, and curating stuff, right, into this kind of scrapbook kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. and it's funny because it kind of is the opposite of what Google wants you to do when it comes to getting ranked in the search engines. And what I mean by that is curating. The, the term curating is gathering other sources and then putting mm -hmm. it into one area. Google mm -hmm. doesn't want you to do that for, like, for example, there's a lot of people that will write blog posts of, like, various things across the web, and then they'll blog about, oh, here's what's happening on, you know, in, in accounting this week, right? And you grab different stories, and you use that to leverage the system to write content so that hopefully you get indexed for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then so Google doesn't want you to do that when it comes to posting blogs, yet they do that for this particular social network. So I'm, I'm not understanding the two. So either they're not meshing the two or we're going to start seeing more curation type things in search. I, like, I don't know, right? So it's time will tell. You know, I, I noticed a couple pop-ups saying something about collections is to be indexed and... I'd love to hear more about that and, and where that data came from. Okay, so I still, I've got another question. <laughs> I pulled the questions today. Uh, so you're saying, Jay, that when you write a blog post, it's better not to be linking to other sources of information? Is that correct? Well, what it, so let's say, let's, let's say we talk about accounting, right? So mm -hmm. accounting technology. So and let's say throughout the week you found five different articles on accounting technology, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what you do is then you grab those posts mm -hmm. and you put them at, you create little snippets, little mm -hmm. little kind of snippets of that post and say here's what's happening this week in accounting technology, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Tesla has announced that they're going to implement it into their vehicles and, and, and whatever, right? So all these five mm -hmm. different articles. So you have five articles that are, you have one article that you're writing and, and mm -hmm. the 75% of that article is basically content that is from other sources that right. you're linking out to. So you want it to be the opposite. You want five sources coming into you as opposed to right. taking five sources away from So Because what you're doing is you're, you're trying to get people to visit your site based on other people's content, and then once they come to, the, to your blog post about these five different articles, you're immediately sending them away. Right. So, so ideally, you want it to be the opposite. You want to write original content so that people will curate you. Yeah. But there's an irony there where you initially you don't want curation in the first place, right? So, right. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's, it's more ideal to have people link to you than you to link to other people. It is okay to do it once in a while. Mm -hmm. Authority-based sources, right? So, like for example, if you're writing about, you know, um, getting started with accounting technology, and then you link out to the word uh, accounting to a Wikipedia article, that's totally cool because that's what's called an authority source, right? And when you link out to authority sources, Google Wikipedia says Wikipedia is considered an authority source. <laughs> that's frightening. <laughs> According to Google, yeah, exactly, yeah. So. Um, now the term authority meaning it, it doesn't mean it's the words that are in the, the, the site, but just the amount of um, Google juice that it has. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of, of this, uh, this, this concept of curation, um, um, when, when uh, the collections first started, I think a lot of us just thought, well, here's a place to uh, to collect all our own postings, 
Right. So that's what I did. I put in um, um, solopreneurs, what makes them tick. Well, that is a collection of interviews that I've done uh, with solopreneurs. And then there's another one called Embrace Aging, and that's a collection of, of videos that I did with a couple of other gals on that topic. Mm -hmm. However, and so, I mean, I've got two or three things in there that are just my own materials. However, what I'm hearing people say now out there is that they are actually curating if they see something that they, um, well, for example, I've created another uh, collection called Supports for Solopreneurs. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit the same as what I'm trying to do with the community. So, um, but what I've been noticing is just recently I'm getting a lot more um, reshares and clicks from things that I've posted in collections rather than the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it, I mean, it, it, and I think Jay is right. I mean, we uh, nobody really knows exactly what uh, what the effect is going to be is yet. I wanted to quickly just share something to kind of validate my point on how how long Google Collections is going to be here. I Googled just simply Google Collections, as you can see up here, mm -hmm. and the, the first result is actually not even their own result, which is this. This is Google Collections right here. That's the second result. The first result is something from Google, but it's actually... Uh, a, 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 we'll call it a code set, call, and which they renamed Guava. Guava. <laughs> but the point is, so if I click and open that, <clears throat> you see what it is. It's it's someone who's kind of created like this is a Google Collections library, and it's a place to store code and, and whatnot. Right. But the point is, if Google really wanted collections to stay, why would they not switch those around? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, this is this is the part where I do the mic drop thing. So, <laughs> so, so what? What? Um, I mean, what we're reading and hearing is, I mean, they've they've Google has separated a whole lot of things and made them separate, and left Google Plus with just collections and communities. And um, I mean, I, I, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm taking from what you, what you're seeing there, Jay, is you don't. Uh, well, maybe, maybe Google Plus is going to disappear altogether. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> okay, I'd, I'd like to chime in. I, I don't think Google Plus is going anywhere. Uh, they've modified what they do and what they want to do and what, how they want to be seen. But it's backed by Google. They can do anything they want. So it's a platform that they can now take and say, what do we want to do with Google now? It's kind of almost like a play toy. But they decided to lean on the social networks. And collections and communities are the two things they want to focus on. Since they are, uh, collections is morphing into something bigger and more powerful. And they are going to be indexing. I, I don't see any way around that. And Molly... Uh, suggested that it may be happening soon. Although, don't quote me or quote her on that, but she's on the inside conversation, so she says that probably collections will be in there soon. And the thing about collections, oh, by the way, it's not just your own post, and correct me if I'm wrong, you can post, I mean, add to your collections other people's posts, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think being a curator is bad because it's a really honest, authoritative thing to do because you can't know it all. I mean, nobody knows it all. And if they say they do, I question that immediately. Although there are a few really good authorities out there, of course. But the uh, the concept of collections is very powerful, and some people are using it effectively, and they are double, tripling, quadrupling their 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 flow through and traffic. Uh, John Quatal, I think, is getting ten times the traffic that he used to after six months of collections work. And he's and he's now he's now thinking, gee, I've got X number of thousands of people 
coming to my collection when I used to have a couple dozen and maybe a hundred. He's got thousands of people. He's out. He's out doing the the Smithsonian Institute for indexing airplanes, and he's uh, he's kicking some butt. But now he's thinking, now what am I going to do about monetizing this traffic? He's got all this traffic. He's trying to figure out something to do with it. So he uh, has done it differently than other people. Other people start off with a product and they try to sell it, and he just went after the community. Now he's got a powerhouse of options, and he just needs to formulate what he's going to do. But he's got he's got his store all, all set because he's got the traffic. Yeah. So collections. All he needs to do is create a collection of affiliate links. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, he, right now I, I don't I don't know why he hasn't done it yet. We've suggested it to him a few times, but he I think he's trying to find what exactly he wants to associate with, and he's taking his time and he's looking for a job now, so he's probably going to work out the affiliate thing soon. But collections and communities. Well, I've been I've been preaching communities for a year in my own. Uh, promotion stuff and collections we hit last summer. I think it was June. I think it was yeah. June where, where um, we were so excited about it, and we had Karen feature a three-part e episode on collections, and she dug into it deep. I don't think the the features of collections have gone away. I think they've added to them, and uh, if we learn how to use them, I think it's going to be as Jay says, a really great powerhouse for ranking and uh, obviously the traffic is there and if they index what John Quatal is doing he's going to be an, like an, one of those overnight successes so if we focus on a few things right we can make a big difference we just got to know what we're doing and then do some moves that will make a difference in our in our promotions but I don't I don't, I don't my opinion no collections aren't going anywhere Google's not going anywhere and I think that we're on the right track um, I'd love it, Roland, if you can share that person's Google Plus, uh, or at least just spell his name out so I can do some research. Oh, Roland, yeah. Yeah, John, just... He's either easy to find, I'll tell you what. All right. Yeah, just, just pop it up in chat. I, I'd, lo I'd like to reply to what uh, Roland was saying in terms of the curation um, and also the, the indexing. So the first thing, uh, we'll get the indexing out of the way. So just, just to clarify, with collections potentially being indexed, this would only happen if the actual uh, two th if I assume two things were happening. One, the collection was public. Two, it is that the um, collection is followed by people. So, so those those two elements would be what would it create be created in index. Now, if I was not following that collection, or if I was not following that person in Google Plus. I would not see that collection. That is what I'm thinking is going to happen, right? Similar to what, how when you see, when you Google something and you see uh, uh, authorship with with Google Plus posts, that's only the result of you following people, right? So, so that's what indexing means. Um, the the curation thing. Roland was saying that you know. Um, you know, saying that curation is a good thing, and 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 yeah, generally speaking, curation is a great thing. I mean, there's there's thousands of, of art galleries that do curation. Curation. That's essentially what the premise of an art gallery is. It's it's curating different arts and museums. It's curating different pieces of art and and displaying it. But it's when people use it to leverage their search engine rankings, you know, which I don't agree with, and Google doesn't agree with, right? So, so there's a there's a, a huge difference there. So the part that I was speaking of is when people use curation, the method of curation to to effectively uh, gain the system and try to increase the rankings. Okay. So again, it, how does Pinterest work as far as Google is concerned? Does does it improve your rack rankings if you have Pinterest boards? I mean, it's used extensively. I, I use it, but I don't know if any of you do. Yeah. Um, I, I think, in my personal opinion, I think Pinterest is probably one of the most violated things that, like, in terms of, of violating uh, 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 terms and, and rules in terms of, because of, you're basically taking other people's images and putting them on your own board. 
and and I, I anyways, I, I digress. But um, Pinterest doesn't really have too many. Uh, doesn't have a, a, a huge uh, effect in Google search because people go to Pinterest when they want to search some, something, right? And mm-hmm. and Pinterest sees that, you know, and they go, okay, well, we're not going to really worry about things getting indexed, you know. So uh, and also, but but. If you go to Google Images and you search for something, then yeah, that stuff will go in. But in terms of actual search results, um, you know. But if I Google something like getting started with Pinterest, then yeah, it might show. But it only really affects Google Images, not not the main Google results for Pinterest. I don't think that's true because I search things and I will get um, I'll get information based that that's in someone's collection on Pinterest. It'll take me there. Because when you click on the image, it's it's actually a link to the original content. Yeah, that's something called Google Universal Results. So so if you're looking for something specific that Pinterest does have, Mm -hmm. or even if you use the word Pinterest, then yeah, it's going to show up in what's called Universal Results. Similar to uh, video results in in Universal Search Results. So if I say, uh, if I go to Google and I I type in how to tie an ass caught not tie, Mm -hmm. I'm going to get videos in the search results because Google knows, okay, this dude wants a video, right? Mm -hmm. So so if I'm saying like, um, oh, I don't know, (sighs) crocheted hats for babies, Mm -hmm. then there's going to be images there and those images will show up in the, the universal search results, right? Mm-hmm. So um, so it, it depends on the actual search. But if I'm searching something like um, how to build a website with WordPress, mm-hmm. I'm not going to get Pinterest results, right? So it really does depend on what right. these search results, you know? So, you know, yeah, I mean, you might, you might, there might be people that are trying to leverage that, so... But uh, in in that sector, I think it's it's really you know Pinterest is not your game. If you have if you're involved in a visual based niche, so if you're in cooking, crocheting, visual arts, mm-hmm. fiber arts, right? Yeah, um, oh yeah, I love Pinterest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then Pinterest is your game, right? And I, I highly advise to to leverage Pinterest and, and also Instagram um, for for that matter. But if you're not in an image based niche, similar to uh, well. We'll call building websites not an image-based niche, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, um, then then you know you don't really need to focus too much on Pinterest. Like I'm not, I have a Pinterest account. I I last time I've been in there is months, right? So, right. Uh, right. I, I don't right. I don't leverage because my audience isn't there, so, right? You know, right. But but if your audience is in Google Collections, then by all means leverage it. You know, I I, I think it, you know, at the end of the day, it's where your audience is, and if you're having an if you're having an audience, um. That's it's starting to show some traction within Google Collections. By all means, leverage that, you know, and also the community element. So, hmm. you missed an important point there with uh, with Pinterest, Jay, which is um, the pet niches are just huge, or niches, as you guys say, um, um, <laughs> dogs and cats, and you know, I mean, if if you're doing anything with uh, with animals of any kind, they're they're also huge inside uh, interest. And jewelry. And food. Yeah. <laughs> and weddings. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I mean, I've looked for crock pot recipes a couple times in Pinterest. <laughs> well, exactly. and, but I think that's how Pinterest started, was a uh, wedding planner for wedding planners. I, I think that was the original uh, yeah. intention, yes. And, and it was very much collecting images. <laughs> so I mean, I have I don't know 35 boards and thousands of images. I can't imagine that I'd want to switch over to Google Collections and try to recreate that. Oh no, I mean I don't think collections would be would be um, what you would want to do. But I, I I first of all I want to say uh, welcome to Paul who just popped in. Welcome Paul, <laughs> and. Uh, um, I, I just wanted to uh, to raise I th- I think it was uh, Karen who said on uh, Saturday Smarties that people are finding that there's more engagement as a result of what they're doing in in um, collections. Um, something else that I noticed 
yesterday was um, when you uh, posted something in there and people uh, commented or reshared or whatever uh, you couldn't you could you could see that somebody had uh, plussed or shared but you couldn't see who they used to um, and so um, yesterday or the day before I think I noticed now you can you know, there's a button there if somebody plussed or shared you can see what the action was so they're they're making changes um, and the uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, point up this morning that um, we're I mean where a lot of us who run hangouts are really disconcerted is that uh, hangouts and events have been removed from Google Plus mm -hmm. and so now where the heck do you go and how do you do that so it means that you have to go to the hangout special website and drill down a couple of layers in there and then you can find the events which will take you to what looks like the old events but um, they've removed the events from the Google Plus um, menu and all of us are lobbying like crazy with because uh, we've been all told if you if there's something you want Google to know send the feedback so everybody's been doing it now I noticed um, one of one of the people that <laughs> I um, I've known for quite a long time in the hangout world Andrew Hatchett who may even be out there listening because um, he pops around every once in a while I noticed this morning what he uh, has done he's been well, what he does is he kind of posts uh, people's um, um, uh, events for Hangouts and he um, has started a collection where he's put those in there. So we're all trying to figure out what, uh, I mean, if we're doing Hangouts, how do we post that so that all of the people we know and connect with can find them? So um, this week I've been experimenting two or three different ways and I did one way and none of you knew about it. None of you saw it. No, none of you responded. I mean we're all so used to that event page where you can just uh, RSVP and um, it, so now what we've got to do is figure out what to do to get around that without, without, that, uh, without that event. So, um, I, and I haven't figured it out yet. I've tried two or three different things. I went, I drilled down and went in and, and created an event, and that's the only reason you folks knew about it. And that was where the, the, um, the you know, the, the RSVPs were listed, and that's how I knew who wanted to be here. So, I, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know how there's, we've got to find another way to uh, to to do that in such a way that we you know people can um, can watch for uh, other people's events and and uh, connect to them. So that seems to be the big one that's really really uh, creating a problem. See, we had events within the communities that, um, before, and that's gone from communities as well. So, <laughs> could I interject? Yeah, right yeah please do. Um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the events page, page is, is definitely, definitely still, still there, there for now. Yeah. If you revert it right to your original yes. Google Plus, and the, the, the new section they've eliminated that, along with things like testimonials and reviews and all kinds of stuff. I, you know, it's, I'm horrified what they're doing in some cases. But if you revert back to the original version, it's still there. So I'm still getting everybody's events. I'm posting my event, and it's showing up in everybody else's events if they revert back to the original. But well, um, I still don't make the connection between what it used to be and the new version, how, how they're going to implement the connection with events and stuff. They may not. Well, I, mean, I, I hear that it's gone. Yeah, the the uh, if you go to the uh, hangout 
uh, website, the new Hangout website, and you can drill down there and find events. And you, um, if you, uh, if you say yes or maybe to one of those, then you get a notification in your notifications. But it doesn't show up anywhere else uh, within Google Plus. So there's where the tricky part is. So yeah, Roland is right. There, you still can go to the old version of Google Plus, but um, <laughs> I'm thinking that's not going to stay there for very long. Could be. Yeah. yeah. Could be. Uh, uh, Paul kind of jokingly said something about a, a paid version. I assume it was joking, but I, I, I honestly think that's something that they could be looking at down the road, be, or a premium version. You know, as Paul mentioned, uh, because. Their number one, Google's number one interest is is monetization, right? Is how are they going to make money from this, right? Mm -hmm. They have a huge list, you know, similar to to Roland's uh, uh, mention of that person, and they need to figure out what to do with it, you know. So so I, I per, if I was using um, Hangouts as often as as you are, I would be very comfortable paying for a premium version. Right? If it makes my life easier, absolutely. You know. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, just out of curiosity, um, that tool that you're, you you were using, is it Crowdcast? Crowdcast. Yeah. What, what's happened with that since this whole shakeup? I've got a big opinion there. If you want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do too, because Crowdcast with their new uh, premium, it's it's all premium. Um, and it's quite expensive, uh, but it's also very similar. It's laid out and very similar to Blab, so you can only have three, four people in the in the room at a time. So that was why I dropped it because that's not my model. That's the you know I really like having everybody in here and and having the conversation. So um, so I didn't go there. Um, there is another uh, wrapper that's called um, Hangouts for Business, and um, they do have a free version. Although most of the things I would want to do fall under their premium ver version, so um, yeah. So I mean, there are the, there are uh, ways to, to do all of that. Um, Okay, so but they still exist, right? They they haven't because usually when Google changes things, they change their code structure because uh, what's called API, uh, which is basically you're, you're leasing their code structure to, to be able to build apps yourself. So so if if those companies still exist and they're still running and they're still you know they're still usable regardless whether they're you know paid or not or or they've changed or whatever, as long as they're still in business, that shows us that. They still care about Google. Still cares about Hangouts and, and the application itself. Mm -hmm. They just probably haven't figured out what to do with it, where to put it. Right? They're they're throwing things on the wall and seeing what sticks. You know, so. Yes, uh, I mean that's so obvious. But I mean, it's uh, um, <laughs> what's uh, what's really disconcerting is those of us that were you know had made figured out how to make really good use of it the way it was before. Now you're just running around. It's, it's a total experimentation trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work, yeah. where, you know. Google's renowned for that, is renowned for, for making things, you know, escalating to a certain point, and then they go, they take their eraser their, of their dry erase board, and all right, well, let's try something different now. <laughs> so, you know, I, like, they did this, Five years ago, uh, with AdWords, where you know they they were so sick of, of like pharmaceutical companies leveraging AdWords and and all these different kind of spammy based techniques to get your ads to show up for really cheap costs. They they Google threw up their hands and said, you know what, we're we're wiping the slate clean. And I know a couple people in the uh, internet marketing space that literally lost their houses. Because they they had put all their eggs in the AdWords basket, and they were legitimately doing legitimate ads, you know, for legitimate businesses. But they and it was extremely profitable for them. But as a result of them wiping the slate clean, 
he lost all his rank, like all, like, because once you stop paying with the credit card, you, you lose out on your traffic, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's all he cared about. He didn't care about organic listings, right? And he lost his house. He had to downsize as a result of that, you know? So it's a real drag, you know, especially when you, you've got a lot of people heavily invested in the products that they're seeing are really awesome, you know? And I think that's one of the major fundamental flaws of, of, of how, of making, you know, throwing things on the wall and making, seeing what sticks and what doesn't, you know, when you get a, when you get a, a sales pitch that says, hey, you know what, this is the next best thing since sliced bread, we really want you to try it and we want your feedback, but we hope you like it. Everyone's like, yay, awesome, this is great, this is wonderful, and then, you know, six months down the road, poof, it's gone, like, and then, you know, people are kind of looking around with chickens, like chickens with their heads cut off, kind of not knowing what the heck to do. You know, and then they roll around on another thing, so. <laughs> so, Jay, that's a perfect segue into something that I really, really wanted to uh, to say. And that is, um, the more I look at all of this, I mean, the more I'm really, really realizing how important it is to have your own website and to post and put things on your own website, on your own real estate that you have control over. That is... Absolutely. You said something very key there, and it's your own real estate. Yeah. Why, why run a business on leased land, right? So why run your own business on leased land? And leased yeah. land would be things like Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus. You know, when it comes to to your sales, pitch, your brochure, right? Your yeah. online brochure, yeah. and uh, and your own website is literally your own is your own space that you have, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, you're hosting it somewhere, but the content is yours. It, it, you can pick that content up and place it anywhere you want. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have a real world example of that, Jay. My uh, my sister in law owns a campground. The campground is on the Cherokee Indian Reservation, and uh, she doesn't own the land that that campground sits on. <laughs> she is subject to the whims of the Cherokee Nation, which has been, it turned out to be very problematic for her. Yeah. But, uh, but what, what, I'm, what I'm finding is that uh, I'm talking to a lot of people, and um, they're totally disillusioned with Google. They've they've stopped using them because they're like, well, what are they going to do to us next? Why bother? I have other things to do with my time. I'm trying to run a business. They're not making it easy for that to happen. Yeah, I and, know. We certainly, and we just saying, no. Goodbye, we Google. We saw that, those comments in uh, in the wealthy affiliate. Uh, uh, feed. I mean, it was just it just went on and on. Um, so uh, I I also wanted to mention, and Roland, I haven't forgotten you. You did say you had something to say about uh, Crowdcast. So, but I wanted to mention a, a web um, uh, a hangout I sat in on um, the other night, where um, the people that the Ashtons, I think, are their names. Uh, some folks from uh, England who do, have, who have been using Hangouts for music, and uh, they're trying to figure out, you know, what what are what's this all about, and how are we going to make this work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, um, it was said that they they don't want to give up using Hangouts because apparently. Given some of the other alternatives, um, the Hangout has a better sound quality apparently than most other platforms, so they still want to use it. And um, um, they, there were several musicians who were on this uh, Hangout discussing this very thing. What do we do? What? How do we make sense out of all of this? And their conclusion was the same as mine. Make sure that you've got everything on your own website, so that uh, and and um, as Paul suggested, maybe it's going to cost if uh, we if we need to do that. But at least then. So what I've been doing is I've been um, all of my uh, for the last while, all of these hangouts are listed on my website. 
And um, this session that we're doing right now is right on the front uh, on a page in my website. So um, I th I think we all really need to to wrap our minds around how to make use of these wonderful products. These are good things, but to uh, to find some way to get to direct people back to our own uh, our own uh, real estate. So uh, Roland, what did you want to say about Crowdcast? <laughs> Sorry, I am so, so many layers deep. <laughs> I'm so many layers deep and and past Crowdcast, but I will just uh, before I get to Crowdcast, because I won't forget that. Uh, what we were talking about, it it's kind of incenses me in a way that we we deal so much with the methodology of how to advertise ourselves, and we don't focus on our product and what we're promoting in the first place, and that's what people should concentrate on and concentrate on their their own content, which which implies your own website, your own blog, and your own real estate. And if we focus on that, then we've got something that we can interact with on all search platforms and all that stuff. And if we don't rely on something to sell something that wouldn't sell otherwise. I, I hate the bait and switch concept or the uh, the concept of promoting something and getting your your articles out there and getting people to buy when it's really not the best product in the first place. So I, I try to focus the people that I work with on how do you improve your product? How do you develop your product? What is your ongoing treatment and support for your product? How do you interact with your clientele? And that's where social media comes in. But uh, okay, that's my sidestep. I, I, I've got it off my chest and I'm fine. Now, back to Crowdcast. Uh, Sai, the owner of the company originally, had, now he has partners. And I believe the partners are involved with more of the financing and the development supporting it. So his decisions are not his own anymore. He started out, I think, re reasonably benevolent really regarding the development of the product and it was free and so forth and a lot of people were testing the beta. But they've developed it to a point where it's not that much of an improvement. I mean, it's a nice platform. It has some features that are very good. The the metrics are supreme, and it's really a great metric system. But he's charging an arm and a leg for it, and there is no freebie other than a 30-day trial, and then you either you either buy it or you don't. And what I think the thing that bothered me the most was he started out saying his his uh, first level of buy-in is a three hangout a month package. And I got back to him and said, like, what is the use of a three hangout a month package? Everybody who's doing a standard show is four, maybe sometimes five a month. So you have to go into overdrive and like uh, buy an extra add-on just to qualify. But the bottom line is he immediately, and we're talking about uh, changes over periods of short weeks. And we gave him feedback, and then he said, okay, four a month. So it's like it still doesn't solve my problem. You got to come up with a better model, yeah. and it's still on for a month. Mm -hmm. But he made Hangouts available, and it's like below the fold type of a message in the bottom. Hangouts were, were available to be fully integrated with Crowdcast for nine ninety nine a month, but the following month it became nineteen ninety nine a month. So uh, what he wants to do is get everybody switched over to his platform, which is it starts looking at 40 50 60 bucks after a while you know the buy in is double or triple business hangouts and uh, it's it's not lucrative enough for people to go there we were harping on him to come up with a replacement for crowdcasts um, i mean regular hangouts comment tracker and i haven't seen it yet so a lot of talk but now he is owned by his investors that that's my opinion Man. And uh, with, with all the wishy-washiness, it just led me to believe that they're at, they're just out to make money for themselves, and their benevolent pantry is now closed. So, for <laughs> for me, for me, I I walk away from that. So I, I'm done with Crowdcast, and 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 uh, Blab is the way to go. If you link up Blab with Hangouts and do them dually, you cover the Twitter clan and you cover the Google Plus platform that's the best interaction zone created so far. So wow. and then lab being differently, you can recruit those people and develop a separate community and one that also links back to your Google Hangouts too. 
Well, and but um, I mean, there there are some things about these hangouts that um, are still in my, in, to my mind, the best. And um, the main one is uh, screen share. Yeah. And you can't screen share on Blab, and you I don't think you can screen share on Crowdcast. Yes, you can, but uh, oh, you can. Oh. Yeah. There there are other limitations. They think they think that they come up with the best platform, but it's not better. It might be more reliable, but it's not necessarily better. Yeah. And yeah. Um, Blab is working on screen sharing. I'm pretty sure that they're going to incorporate it. They like to like set and go and, and forget it and not have to improve the platform, but the people are giving them so much feedback that they're having to invest some time in development of that. I think that they're, they're going to come up with a, a screen share probably in the next few months. It sounds like these days we're becoming pie pipers where you know we have to switch over from platform to platform. It's like, okay guys, we're going to Blab, let's go. You know? <laughs> and then next thing you know, all right now, it's actually a go to webinar. All right, let's go, you know, and, and you have to merge these people over to these new platforms and as a result, you're gonna lose some soldiers on the on the journey there, right? So I just ah it's just such a drag. You yeah. know. At the end, of, what about YouTube Live? Like, I don't know if you guys, if you use, if you've ever used YouTube Live, where, uh, or if there's any kind of um, syncing between like Google Hangouts on air and and YouTube Live. Well, you let know. me tell you, what what you're on right now is a YouTube Live. Ah, uh, okay. There you go. All right. Yeah. So you can go in there and set it up. And you get this is like a hangout on air, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but um, but then it doesn't. Uh, if you do it that way, you have you still have to find some way to promote it over in Google Plus. And that was the reason I set up the community in the first place. Was that was the way to do it? So. Now um, the other the other tricky piece about all of this, and uh, Roland re made reference to comment tracker, and uh, I mean I really wish I had comment tracker working right now because there are a lot of comments in the comment stream here that I'm unable to share uh, with the uh, anybody who's outside viewing, mm -hmm. and. Um, so I did have it set up in such a way that I could do that if people posted their comments in the right place. But this morning when I set that up, because Andrew Hatchett had reshared my uh, event to his collection, when in my way of doing that meant that I got all of the comments from his collection rather than so we got to find a different way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, but I'm also looking at um, um, Nathan says he's very uh, he doesn't trust uh, doesn't trust Google. Um, would rather have uh, not not uh, not be totally dependent on them. There are lots of other ways. Uh, Anne said she started a collection and she said it's ugly and awkward compared to Pinterest. <coughs> uh, <laughs> speaking of ugly, I'm going to get this ugly mug out of here. Out of here. <laughs> it is 10 o'clock. So we, uh, we I think we, I think we have pretty well exhausted the, uh, the topic this morning. Um, and thank you all for, for joining me. Um, stay tuned uh, in the uh, in in the community because as I find new things or I find out things or discover things, that's where I'll I'll be putting it. So thank you all, um, uh, Carlo. We didn't hear a word from you this morning. <laughs> so um, I think it's time, but I think it's time for us to sign off. Um, this is Lowell Ann. Uh, from your being your own CEO um, success circle. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>